What's your favorite language? I don't have a favorite language. I'm too old for that shit. I think at this point in my life, if I were to start a startup, I would say Go is my favorite language now. Let me clarify why I think Go ultimately is better than Rust uh, for being productive and making software. Where I, I think that there's two different places where Rust and Go shine. I think where Rust really shines and it really does a better job than Go is when you have a defined structure input, either synchronous or asynchronous calls all flowing in. And you can do a series of pretty much pure functions, like really treat it like a functional uh, transform. Really great iterator support, R like best in class string handling and parsing, everything. This is where Rust shines. And then out the other side, right? This is where I think it shines. But all of these things are extremely, when I, when I say pure, I mean like you, you really don't have state in your application. It's all held. And any state you have, you can just make it straight up static in a one cell. Or something like that. Do you, do, you, do you see what I'm saying? And so it's like very, 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 very simple. Now, where I think Go shines, it's going to be it's gonna be a little bit hard to understand this one. Um, I think it shines for everything else. You need some global state? Not a problem. You, you don't want global state? Not a problem. They both do the things right, which is, one, no inheritance. No inheritance. Not allowed. Right? Not allowed. We're not going to allow that. Okay, this is great. You know, they they both have a very sim a similar feel with traits versus interfaces, right? They're they're very very similar. It's just that the thing I don't like the one thing I'd knock against Go. If I had one thing that I I could change about Go, it's that they need an option type. Honestly, they need an option type, and then of course the corresponding result type. Right? That's pretty much all my big gripes against Go is option type, and I want a syntax to handle errors. Right? Like I want the very simple case of try function and that's that pattern matching. I don't even think that is that is that amazing. Honestly, I think pattern matching is really, really good if you have the right utilities for it. I don't think it'd be amazing in Go. Honestly, I just don't think it'd be amazing in Go. I don't think you'd get something Welcome out of it Costco. that would make it go dramatically better because it's not really for Go. I think pattern matching works much, much better in Rust than it would in Go. Uh, for Rust, on the other hand, I'm like 50-50 on the borrow checker. There's a lot of great things with the borrow checker, but there's also a huge amount of pain in the asses with the borrow checker. And so I'm like 50-50 on it. Uh, there's like, obviously, there's like little tricks and rules you have to learn about Go. Like interfaces are always pointers. Uh, you know, you, you get the idea. It's not a big deal. They're all pretty simple to kind of get over. Just like any language has its set of rules you just have to learn. So anyone that complains about those kind of things, they're just being weak, right? They're just being stupid and weak. Borrow checker, just copy it. Exactly. I find that if you're doing this, you'll you'll see just a lot of clones uh, because of that. Now, here, I'm going to give you a downside. Rust type system, I think, is inferior to OCaml. So with OCaml and their new lifetimes that they're, that they're, uh, that they're putting in, OCaml doesn't tie lifetimes to types. And I think that this is the way. Whereas Rust, a lifetime is a part of the type. And that is completely broken. And why I mean that's completely broken is that anytime you go and do something, you you know, you built this program, it's getting big, you're enjoying the program, you've made some good stuff. But now you have a part that's a bit performance sensitive. And you're like, wow, you know, we if we increase this, we dramatically improve our overall programs performance, this will be great. So you just toss on a little tick A. What happens? Oh boy, everything. Everything's just about to get a tick A from function calls to other definitions to calls. Like it just, your whole program gets destroyed by a tick A. And so how do I feel about Rust? I think it's okay. I think there's really great things for Rust and I still will write all my basic command line utilities. I also think LSPs are fantastic to write in Rust. I really think it's the right abstraction for a lot of things, but it's not a pure abstraction always. So there you go. That's why I would write Go versus Rust. Like I think a server is just simpler in Go. It will always be simpler in Go. You create a database connection. You don't need to like line up your entire server. You don't need to use web, like app data. You don't need to do anything. You can just have a database connection. You can interface that thing out so you never have to do it. If you want to test, you can test with some non some non database thing and just have a simple interface, simple mock you build, whatever you want to do. Like everything about the language is really designed and developed very well for just handling some simple operations along with defer. Also, the Rust Foundation is just doo doo garbage. Am I the asshole? I think I could be the asshole, but generally this is what I want. And so just a quick explanation about one thing. Why do I want options? I hate nil. I think that nils should be handled at the compiler level. 
I think Nil should be like, hey, halt there. Halt! Halt, Satan! Did you know this could be possibly Nil? You should have to handle it. Uh, which also means I think maps should have always been uh, a zero value of an empty map. I do not see why you would ever want a map that's not zero valued. I think it's complete. I think it's a complete miss in the language. It's just a source of easy bugs. Get the hell out of there. Um, and syntax to handle errors. I think that one's obvious. Right now you have not equals uh, or not equals nil. I think we could get rid of that. Right, unless if you want specific handling, just like Rust. Rust has the question mark, but also you have the whole match foo, and then you have the er thing. Right, like you do have you you do have to manage stuff. It's fine. Uh, have you seen the iterator proposal for Go? No, I haven't, but that sounds exciting. Uh, Rust lifetimes color your types like async functions color your functions. This is a really good way to put it. This is an incredibly good way to put it. I love I love how you're saying this, which is now Rust has a problem because not only does it have colored functions, it has colored types. I think that that is a really, really clever way of saying it. Uh, I love that. Yes, a null safety is, its biggest, is, is truly its biggest mistake because it's garbage collected. I would have much rather seen something like... Uh, like, because you know pointer receivers, they work, right? Um, the, you already know the pointer's there. But receiving a pointer to something, receiving an interface to something shouldn't contain the risk of it being null. It should simply... Uh, see, I agree that nil values are probably the, my least favorite thing about Go. But there is a weird sort of argument for it in that uh, it, it's very familiar to C programmers. Yeah. Uh, and there is perhaps a mistaken assumption that every fresh developer will know at least C. I would say, well, I mean, that's the thing is that I would argue the difference, which is if something can be nil, you should have specific compiler checking for it, and you could just never make the mistake. So it's not even about loving, hating, or knowing C. It's just that you cannot oopsie-daisy that one operation. Just take it out because it's such a simple thing to goof up, right? That's my whole thing about it. And, I, and, and I'm hoping generics, as they make generics better and better, I'm hoping that it, it makes it into the language, right? And that you could actually have a option level interface something that just enforces some checks and i'd be very happy and here's the deal options with garbage collection can we all agree with that super simple handling super simple handling right uh nil turns every type into a hidden some type oh interesting yeah you could say that uh i think it's just uh, with pointers it's just a pointer dog it's just a zero why is it simple because it's beautiful. I thought you hated garbage collection. I do and don't hate garbage collection. I hate languages that make tons of garbage. Right? So that's why I like that's why I get so frustrated with JavaScript. JavaScript makes a ton of garbage all the time. I know, let's see, but your utterly subjective data point uh, with a sample size of one is not only invalid, but it also is completely impossible to qual uh, quantify, yes. But the ghost syntax is absolute garbage. It's really not. Ghost syntax is not garbage. Ghost syntax is clearly not garbage. There's nothing garbage about it. It is one of the simplest, easy to understand syntaxes of all time. In fact, it may actually be better than JavaScript syntax at this point because of how simple it is. Anybody can learn it, right? It is like that simple. Go syntax is great. The thing is, is you should measure syntax on a semantic meaning per symbol, right? It's, it's, it's very small, whereas Rust is it's very high, right? There's a lot more things you have to process. You know what I mean? There's a lot more things going on. Just some thoughts on mine. Okay, there you go. That's why I think I would use Go over Rust if I was starting a project. Uh, it's very, very simple. I think it just, for the most part, it does what I need. Now, now recently, I did just build the HTMX LSP, which is almost feature complete at this point. And there's like a small bug, and then it's, it's literally feature complete, and we got to get it into Mason and all these other places to do that. But with that said, the LSP written in Rust was the right choice. It just simply was the right choice. All the tools are there. There's good string handling, and tree sitter is natively bound and easy to use in Rust. It was just the right choice for the time. I think that that was truly the way to do it, is that Rust was the better choice. So if I'm going to build an LSP, I'll choose the right tool. If I'm going to build a web server, I'm going to choose probably the right tool, which is likely Go over Rust. Now, there's some arguments why you could use Rust over Go for certain web services. I'm on your team, but I'm going to say this, that most semi-experienced Rust developers will write a server that performs worse than a Go server written by a newbie. Because I think it's extremely hard to write very well-performing Rust, right? It takes a very few people can write really good Rust. So it's just something to think about. 
And so that's kind of how I think about it is that is 99% good enough for net, for most services? Yes. If you have a very intense data handling service, an adapter to a database, whatever, yeah, maybe you should rust it and you need to get really, really good. And you need to hire that one guy that slightly levitates while he walks. Yeah. You can even like pre-screen your candidates. Hey, what color is your hair? Ah, non-traditional. Well, come on in there, rust expert. You've been sufficiently scarred by rust that you dye your hair colors. Come on in. That's what I think happens. I think that's why they dye their hair colors is that once you've done enough rust, it, it's so emotionally damaging that you actually start dyeing your hair different colors. That's how I think it happens. I don't have a, I'm not 100% yes, but I think, I think there's something there. Yeah, you're asking to be canceled again. Good, because this is now a YouTube video. The name is The Private Gym. <laughs>